That's what computers used to be like. That is so cool. Wow. Designed for Windows XP. Mm -hmm. Are we gonna go ahead deadhead or cut those sucker trees down? Yeah. All right, cool. Have fun, kiddos. Okay. Okay. Oh my God. I'd give you a little update on how the move is going. Things are going really well. We are fully here. All of our stuff is here, but we're not fully set up yet. Uh, I'm gonna take you around, I'll give you a little tour of the progress in the shop. It's been really good. It's still taking some time before it feels like, like this is our house, but Anyways, before I give you a little tour around, I just gotta, we just sold some stuff. That's another thing we're kind of doing is it <laughs> the process of moving, you realize how much junk you accumulate that you do not need. We're putting some of this stuff for sale, even like just things like the boys. We had one boy upstairs at our other place and the older two had their own downstairs. Their bedroom downstairs is massive. So all three of them are in one room and they've still got room for all their guitars. They've got a piano in there. I mean, it's a very large room. But some of the uh, the youngest like cubbies and little organizers are kind of little kitty, and so we're just selling stuff like that. I'm gonna get rid of a bunch of my camera gear because I've got camera stuff from years and years and years that I have never used. That old computer, I mean, that was in my garage, and now it's sitting on a workbench in my shop. It needs to go. There's so many things I'm realizing that I do not need to own, but yet I do. And it's driving me nuts. Another thing, oh, this, this is kind of cool actually. I was out for a bike ride the other day and uh, you know I always get excited with the ground score when you find stuff on the ground. Check that out. <laughs> a Kenwood, I, I forget the exact model of this, but this was kind of in the mud and it hadn't rained for about a week. So this has been there for at least a week or two. Battery's obviously dead, it was left on but I'm trying to figure out what these things are worth or if I can just get a charger for it and I don't know, maybe I get another one and these would be great radios for you know the boys out there building their dirt bike track or whatever. Something that I now own that I don't need. Anyways, let's, let's go take a look around. But before I give you a tour inside, I just gotta go close the gate. We've got a, a gate over at the front of our property, which is nice. But obviously when we're uh, selling things and people are coming to our house to pick things up, I've gotta go open the gate and then turn the power off. And uh, it's a really comforting feeling having a big old gate. So people can't just, again, we're on a, on a highway that I've never been on a highway before. So it's a little bit different. Turn the power on. Oversized load. I mean, the gate's closing. Hey, we never have anything like that going down the road by our old house. Again, I see a lot of motorcycles here and it gets me pretty stoked. Oh, I gotta figure out what I'm doing with my tractors and the junk. Got a lot of weeding we need to do. So this little bike that I'm on, it obviously needs a little bit of work. It's gonna be my next bicycle project. I picked this thing up thinking it would be a great little uh, you know, like a little folding, an inexpensive folding bike. It's the ever famous Raleigh 20. This thing was bone stock when I got it. I've upgraded the wheels. We're at a single speed. I need a bigger free wheel in the back because it's geared a little high and I might just leave this crank. And I know a lot of people do things to get rid of them. And originally I was wanting a bike that I could put in the back of my car. I was gonna do new forks for it, new bars, make a higher bar and essentially make a bike that fit me, that I could fold into the trunk so that when I took the kids to music lessons or what have you, I could go out and go for a ride. But I think what I'm actually gonna do is this is gonna be, and it kind of is, it's like my little farm truck. I had taken the back rack off it, but I'm actually gonna put that on. And then I'm gonna get a, a milk crate on there. And it's gonna be a great little bike for, you know, I can put tools in it to go to the house and back. I'm constantly going to grab a screwdriver, a drill for hanging a picture, doing a this, doing a that. 
So that thing would be a real handy little, it already is, I'm already using it like that, but once I get a milk crate on there, it's gonna be a cool bike, we might paint it up. Okay, let's start out with a real quick tour, we're not getting too crazy. Start out with my working area. So I've set this area pretty much like my garage shop. Uh, workbench here I just built, I'm not quite done, I need to add some bracing to it, and I'll put a shelf on the bottom, and that shelf can go for things like my cold cut chop saw, a portable band, I'm not sure if I want to commit to having that on here. I think this, this, and drill presses might go into the grinding room over there. I'll show you that in a minute. But this is the basic space. I've got a nice 4x8 table here for large projects. I can weld on this, and I'm just, I'm just going to do a sacrificial top. I wanted a steel top, but it's so expensive that it's just like, pff, whatever. You know, for building a go-kart, for instance, I can, you know, it's nice that you can just shim up on here. I could screw pieces of wood to hold different pieces of steel. So it is kind of nice to have a wood top, albeit it's not as precise as metal and it doesn't last as long, but this is going to do just fine for now. So we've got plenty of workspace here. This is a 16 foot long workbench. My little white thing that I keep stuff. This is mostly all knife making stuff. And then I put in a shelf up there, you know, for paper towel, gloves, cleaners. Megaphone when I need to call the kids. Far from out protesting. <laughs> Just kidding. And then again, over here is going to be the motorbike area. So we've got motorcycle parking. My boys have their toolboxes. This is completely unorganized, undone. I've basically just thrown tools under here. So I need to spend some time to figure out how I want these set up. And then, you know, just junk all over there we need to take care of, get rid of. I think for now, I'm actually just going to put my milling machine right on here i wanted to make a separate stand over there for it but in the interest of time i mean i need that tool and i think i'm just gonna bolt it down right here for now i'm realizing there's quite a bit of this process of setting up a shop that it's gonna be in stages so i'm just gonna have to be okay you know with it not being the complete configuration and then also i might change my mind as i'm going right i might set something up and be like you know what? this really doesn't work for my you know just the workflow isn't there i don't know I'm just gonna, just gotta start making it so I can use it. Now this room here is gonna be a grinding room. What I need to do is I've got all these grinders in here. I need to take these out, take all this stuff out, this all going away, I've got storage in the back. I'm gonna paint this room, get new lights, and this will be the grinding room. And so probably will keep my grinders here. And I'm thinking on this side, I'll put a workbench and that way I can have my saws and maybe drill presses over in this corner. And the thing I was thinking about is that that can be the place where all metal material removal happens. You know, with the cold cut chop saw, you get all those little tiny filings, the little shavings all over the place to get in your shoes, you track them. So if I can contain that to a single room, I think that's gonna be really advantageous. And uh, yeah, so that's gonna happen this week. I took a bunch of stuff out of the garage this weekend so we can put our garage gym back in there and I've just piled it all here so it all needs to get put back up, up on this here mezzanine. Look at all this stuff. So essentially this was all mezzanine stuff, less the tires. This was mostly stuff that was in the shipping container as well as a lot of this stuff. You know, different bicycle frames. Somebody went through their golf balls this morning. My oldest boys are golfing right now and I guess they were in a real rush. And then eventually my lathe is gonna go in this corner, but that'll be a little bit down the road. I've gotta finish out a bathroom. There's a bathroom right there. And then also get the water brought out to the shop here. Might put a shop sink right here. It'd be really handy to have. I think there's a way that I can do all the bike parking on this wall and I should be able to get all the bikes in here. You know, I mean, it should be doable. And then I had some Ikea pegboard that was gonna go right there. But for the life of me, I have no clue where it is. I looked five times, five dedicated searches, and I can't find that stuff. It is just, it's just vanished. So I'm gonna have to pick up some more. And so I'll have a pegboard right there. And underneath it, I'm gonna put a little workbench, uh, you know, for changing tires. I'm gonna have my bicycle stand there, the repair stand. And then I'll put some shelving up on this wall here, just for things like parts and tubes and, you know, accoutrement, all the things you need to own to be able to uh, go bike riding and do things. So I'm excited. I'd love to get this bicycle room finished, but 
obviously that's not a super important i mean it'd be nice to get it done but it's there's there's more important things that we have to get done first did a little bit of shuffling you could say not really organizing in the etsy room but at least it's a semi <laughs> semi usable space but uh you know we're still working and keeping up with orders and doing all the things we need to do during this whole process and it's kind of tough now the one thing about this room is that it slants and uh you, you can't tell in the video but i think from where i'm standing to that wall i would say the floor over there is probably three or four inches lower than here uh just walking across you can feel it you can, you can actually feel that you're going down and that's not a good thing so we're gonna have to take off the tin on the outside of that wall get some jacks lift this floor up block it and fix it that way that's that's gonna have to happen before we go gangbusters on what we want to do in here which is gonna be rip out the floor paint the walls put in new lights paint the ceiling get that all freshened up and this will be a real wonderful space my wife wants to make this a really uh a very fresh, funky, contemporary workspace with like plants and maybe we'll do some painted barn board somewhere. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be a fun little project to do, but we gotta get the heavy hauling, the big lifting of that floor done first. Probably put in new windows too. But yeah, that pretty much sums up the progress that we've made out here in the shop. I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, but I'm at the point now where I can actually build things out. You know, if I need to build a shelf, I've got a nice workbench to do that on now. All of my tools, my main tools, welders, grinders, drill presses, they've been located, they've been set up, I can use them. So now we're gonna start refining and getting like the, breaking things down, you know, like saying, okay, now I want this area to be a little bit more refined. I'm gonna need to build this shelf, put this here, put that there and advance the cause. And then, yeah, we still have a lot of work to do in the barn, a lot of organizing. There's things like my utility trailers that I would love to have in the barn, so they're out of sight. I would love it if you came here, you drive in, and there's like not a lot of vehicles parked out and about. There's not like trailers and this and that, just. Number one danger, the hardest thing that my dad told me when we moved to our other place, he says, because you have land, it's gonna be a very natural thing to collect junk. And that was absolutely true. And it's very hard. The hardest thing is to fight that urge just to be like, hey, yeah, I can buy more trucks, right? You find a truck for 300 bucks that doesn't run but just needs a starter. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll just put it out in the field. Gotta watch out for that stuff. Anyways, just wanna give you guys a quick little update video. I'm stoked about how things are going here. And uh, yeah, I just can't wait to, uh, to keep building it out and, and taking guys along, building some fun stuff, and sharing it all here with you. Have a fantastic day. Ooh, there's a beetle on my workbench. I've got to go take care of that. But have a fantastic day, and thank you so much for watching. Cheers. I did that wrong. Cheers. I don't even know how it goes anymore.